This is the watch list for Tuesday. Let me get the date right here. Tuesday will be January 19th. The market is closed on Monday the 18th. So here we go for uh, the 19th, Tuesday. You have, uh, here's a SPY, really big volume and it did close above its open. We talked about the September lows here and then you had that nasty August flush. Um, it was pretty spooky. Let me take uh, Friday's candle out of it. It was pretty spooky when you were down like this and then you had a, a big volume bounce. Okay, this was kind of like the bounce everyone was looking for and you think, okay, if nothing else, we're gonna consolidate for a while or we're gonna do another V bottom like here um, or here. And then the very next day we, we log in and we're below Friday, um, that would have been what, below Thursday's lows. So um, that's pretty bearish, but it also is in an area, the market's in an area um, where it's had some really nice bounces. Having said that, I have no idea how we're gonna open on Tuesday, so um, all I can do is put together a list and then trade it on an intraday basis accordingly. That's why I love being in cash every night. I don't have to worry about how we open. So let's start with FXCM. Um, you know what, this is a pretty narrow range on Friday when you consider the market um, was getting beaten up pretty bad. So I had this on bounce watch for Friday, never gave any kind of a trigger, so we didn't do anything with it. Um, I still like it. I like the fact that it held up pretty well um, in a pretty weak market. So uh, that just goes back on bounce watch. Uh, what I'd like to see is it to trade in a narrow range for a while and then break out to the upside, you know, preferably not first thing in the morning. So that one goes on watch. Uh, we could get a really nice move in it. BSI, um, talked about this in the video for uh, Thursday night and it gapped up on Friday and uh, took off and then reversed. Um, I like this as a bounce play. It's got a tiny float. Um, it's got a lot of a lot of people paying attention to it now. And so, um, you know, it doesn't bother me that it came all the way back down. It came from, it hit a high of uh, over $8 on Friday um, and then came back down and closed at its lows. That's fine. Uh, you're close to a gap fill and this is another good candidate for a potential short squeeze. Uh, it may come in another day on Tuesday, it may come in all day, it uh, may never break out, I don't know, but it doesn't cost anything to have it on watch. And with the proper intraday setup, that one is a beautiful mover, so keep it on watch, all right? Uh, Hertz, HTZ, um, just another down day, uh, good shape and volume, looking for a reversal there, especially with the market. Um, I always try to have some that are really beaten up. Uh, well, a lot, of them, a lot of them are really beaten up right now. AMT. Um, has been selling off since 99 all the way down to uh, below 88 on Friday. And if you look to the left here, you had a really nice bounce back here and here. So I've got a line. So if it gets down to that area, which appears to be right below 87, um, that's an area where I'd certainly look for an intraday bounce. Remember, I don't hold overnight, so I'm not in any danger. I just try to trade these on an intraday basis. USG, I believe they make uh, sheetrock. Gypsum wallboard, whatever uh, you know. So, and you know what? The actually the home builders like Lennar, um, Toll Brothers, are all kind of uh, holding up fairly well. Let's see, DHI. Um, so they had nice gaps down, but reversals on uh, on Friday. So you know, if the home builders get any kind of second day bounce. USG is not a bad one to look for. You know, and it was 25 and just straight down. Volumes increasing. So this is getting near a point where it's going to give a nice reversal. NHTC, now this chart doesn't look very pretty, um, but when you zoom in on just, you know, when you zoom into what's happened the last few days, you had a big move here, and now you're two days lower in a pretty narrow range um, on Friday. And let's go to 15 minute candles, I'll show you why it's more interesting. This actually moved so fast on uh, whatever day this was, um, probably Wednesday. Uh, it moved so fast, I think that it got halted and then it came back open again and then went up through 23. So that move over the course of 30 minutes, not counting the time it was down for the halt, was from 1650 all the way to over 23, all right, in in less than 30 minutes of trading time, all right. So since then, um, this was the next day, which would have been Thursday, there was the opening 15 minute high, just didn't do anything, just lower all day. And then uh, it also put in its high in the opening 30 minutes on Friday, and then just kind of really quiet while the market was, um, you know, chopping around. So this is, uh, you know, if it can hold above the 1750 area, keep an eye on that one. Uh, it, it, even if it flushes below it, I think it's worth watching for um, 
a decent move higher. Anytime I get a stock that has a crazy move like that on an intraday basis, I try to watch it for the next three or four days. Um, you know, it didn't cost me anything to have it on a chart. I didn't do anything with it the last couple of days. Um, but I can be ready, right? If it gives me a narrow range and looks like it's going to break to the upside or I already have it on a chart and my trading platform in case there's follow-up news from two days ago, um, you know, you can be ready to go, right? MRO, biggest volume yet for this sell-off. Had this on watch the other day um, and, you know, really, really massive volume. So I uh, put in a high of 837. I'm going to watch that one trade just because of the shape and volume on that chart for a potential bounce. Uh, in the energy sector, you can see the name there, Marathon Oil. So, you know, keep a close eye on oil. And if oil's bouncing, this is a, a good go-to one. Um, I used M WMB the other day when it looked like this. Said if oil bounced, this is one to watch and it gave a massive bounce, right? Um, the range that day was from 1324 to 1844. Um, and one of our members, Jane, spotted that one early for everybody in the chat room. So there's an example. Um, it's actually holding up fairly well. There's an example of why I would have something like an MRO on watch, even though it's really beaten up, okay? Um, SWHC. Smith & Wesson, I don't have the 50-day on here, but it, it closed, I think, slightly above the 50-day. This is, uh, the screen line is a 60-day, which I don't really use for my daily charts. I use it for my five-minute charts, so that's why it's on there. But um, I can slide my little smaller version of the daily chart over, and that orange line is the 50-day. So you got a nice daily hammer at the 50-day. Um, these gun stocks, uh, they've increased guidance and everything else, so I really think this one, uh, I, I, I've said this in several videos, and it just keeps falling, but so does the market. Um, and because I don't hold overnight, it doesn't doesn't hurt me, right, to have these on watch. Um, I'm looking for a continuation of this bounce, though, um, Tuesday or maybe one day next week. We'll have to see how the market opens. But um, these gun makers are certainly overdue for a bounce. After a huge move, they've almost round-tripped. I mean, Smith & Wesson broke out right here, and it's almost round-tripped. And uh, trust me, they're buying guns in droves out there. So uh, Ruger, I, it, very nice bounce on Friday as well. I'm not gonna, that one's a tougher trader. It's much, much thinner. You can see here, uh, only half a million shares traded on Friday. So I, I, I'd rather trade Smith & Wesson if the gun stocks move. And again, having this on watch and on your trading platform, um, you might get some kind of news uh, where the president is talking about more gun control. And if you hear that over your squawk box, um, you know, generally you can buy with both fists on, uh, on one of these and get a really nice trade. Okay, so uh, SGNT. Um, really nice spike here. And, and look at this last three days. And I'll throw up the SPY one more time. Look at the last three days on the SPY. Um, well, it's been a little weird, but it's been down, even though you had these bounces um, and it's closing green on an intraday basis. Still pretty ugly the last three days, right? Um, and so SGNT has great relative strength here. And you had a big volume spike here, kind of a quiet inside day. And it's really flirting with this Three-day high break, switch to 15-minute candles. Yeah, so over like 1580 is really interesting, but I don't always, you know, I won't necessarily wait for it to get there. It might trade at 15, between 1550 and 1560 for the opening hour. And then if it breaks, you know, then it breaks that tight range to the upside, you know, you've got catalysts right here and here that might catapult it through 16 and maybe up to this 17 resistance. So a, another example, just have it on a chart because uh, it looks good. It's got great relative strength. And then CLDX, um, you know, nice bounce here off 10 and another big volume, you know, he had a little bottoming tail through 10 on uh, Thursday and a nice solid green close on a, you know, on a, on a uh, in a weak market. So, and big volume. So uh, I like this over its two day high CLDX, uh, 1119, um, 1119. And I think both of that's two equal highs there, 1119. So up in the 1120s, this one might spike. All right. Um, I don't want to get too involved and have uh, 50 stocks on watch because, you know, you, you can put in three hours finding all these great charts and then log in on Tuesday and the market is gapping down 300 points or up 300 points. And then you can take all that work and all those charts, throw them out the window and start looking for what's moving that day. So, um, you know, in this kind of volatile market, um, I try to just have a smaller watch list, although this one isn't that small. Um, so anyway, enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see everybody on Tuesday.